Hi, this is Andip Jali, Karan Sud and Manos Prilakis, presenting case 286 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a Seffert's crook right coronary artery with heavy calcification. The patient was an elderly gentleman with prior PCI of the lady and the right coronary artery presented with angina and normal ejection fraction. The angiogram was concerning for um, osteal left main disease. There was also some faint feeling of the PDA on the posterior lateral. Again, some of the projections are concerning for osteal left main disease. And this is the right coronary artery that has uh, a mid RCA lesion with heavy calcification and heavy tortuosity, as seen in multiple projections. So the plan here was to first address whether there is significant left main disease. The patient had an intravascular ultrasound of the left main, and as we're coming back from the LAD, we're now getting into the left main, and then coming back now in the aorta, there is no significant or osteal disease. So after doing that, there was an attempt for opening the right coronary artery. This is an AL1 guide through femoral access. This is an over-the-wire balloon, which can be a problem. And here, clearly, we have poor support over the wire balloon. This uh, could not uh, be recanalized, so the attempt was stopped, and the patient uh, was referred for surgical evaluation. The surgeons did accept to do surgery. However, they recommended a repeat PCI attempt, and this is when the patient came to our lab. This time, we have a, a little different setup. We do have an eight French guide. It's an AL2. So the tip goes almost all the way to the top of the surface crook, which provides stronger support. We also started up front with a six French trap liner guide extension. And our plan here was to first try undergrade. And if that failed, try retrograde to the septals, even though we did not really see a continuous connection from the septals to the PDA and the posterior lateral, if that failed to do undergrade dissection or reentry. The CTO did have a clear cap, was relatively short, but did have significant calcification and distally was filling mainly through epicardial collaterals. Here is a turnpike LP with a filter XTA and the C on black, multiple attempts to cross, but unfortunately the wire could not be advanced past the mid right coronary. After several attempts, we switched to retrograde. We encountered difficulty getting the wire into the septal despite different bends, so we used the Supercross 120, and then uh, there was surfing using the SU03 as well as the C on black. However, despite multiple attempts, the wire could not cross into the distal RCA. And as a result, we decided to switch back to the undergrade approach. We have uh, the Corsair catheter as well as a Mongo guide wire. It was difficult to advance, but finally, after multiple manipulations, the Mongo took a 360 bend and seemed to advance along the course of the vessel. So this was partially the problem, this very extreme 360-degree bend in the distal RCA. Unfortunately, the Corsair could not cross through this 360 bend, so we decided to bring the guide extension, the trap liner, further down. We did the inch warming technique, inflating the balloon halfway in, halfway out, deflating and advancing the guide extension. So doing this, we were able to bring the guide extension all the way all the way down to the distal RCA. However, despite doing that, we cannot get the Corsair. So what to do to this uh, microcatheter and cross lesion? We decide to use a smaller microcatheter. So this was a fine cross M3, and this one successfully took the band to deliver to the distal right coronary artery. But unfortunately, as the contralateral injection shows. The wire we have is not uh, into the lumen, but it's actually extra plaque, and therefore we need to do re-entry. And this can be seen a little better here. The wire is clearly extra plaque. However, delivery of equipment we knew was going to be challenging, so we exchanged the Mongo for a miracle wire that provides more support, and also predilated 
using a 2.0 millimeter balloon. There's always a fine balance in facilitating delivery of the reentry equipment, while at the same time trying to minimize the formation of hematoma. Unfortunately, the Stingray balloon could not be delivered. It was stuck prior to this significant bend. So after multiple attempts, we switched for a recross, which is the only dual lumen microcatheter with two over-the-wire lumens. And then using the recross and a guy next to, we were able to enter into the distal true lumen as confirmed in contralateral injections. So after switching for a workhorse guide wire, we then predilated the distal right coronary artery and tried to deliver a stent. However, the stent could not be delivered. To overcome this challenge, we decided to get the guide extension as far down as possible, so we switched the trap liner for a slightly smaller 5.5 friends guide liner coast, and this one could go all the way down to the RCA at the side of the bend. And by doing that, we were able to bring it uh, way distally. And after delivering past the bend, then a 3 by 40 or 0 thin strut set was delivered to the right coronary artery. We visualized from the, um, the position of the stand, deployed the stand, and then placed another overlapping stand, 3 by 40 more proximally. And this provided a nice result, but there was still residual disease into the proximal RCA. And we were also concerned that the amplets and the guide extension might have caused injury on the proximal right. Therefore, we want to cover it with a stand. Similar issues with stand delivery through this torture segment. So to overcome this, we did inswarming once again. This is the guideliner cost, inswarm inside the previously placed stand. And then after doing that, delivery of an additional stand was fairly straightforward. The stand was deployed and provided a nice final result with Timothy flow into the right coronary artery, which was actually a fairly large vessel. Fortunately, we did not uh, lose the patency of the acute marginal branch. Incidentally, the following day, there was an episode of hypotension. The patient had a cardiac MRI. Then he was found to have a septal hematoma, likely from the retrograde crossing attempts. However, he was hemodynamically stable afterwards and did not require any intervention. So in summary, this is a case showing the adverse impact of calcification and tortuosity. Had some very extreme bends on the right coronary artery to allow crossing with wire as well as equipment delivery. For cases like this, there is no substitute for achieving very strong guide support. So here the amplets left two, advanced all the way to the tip of the separate uh, crook, and then by using the guide extensions delivered through inch warming, we were able to deliver initially our wire, then uh, the microcatheter, do re-entry, and uh, get into the distal true lumen. Very important to use a towel to minimize the risk of the wire wrapping around the push rod. And then the recross can be used because it's more deliverable if the stingray fails to cross to allow distal re-entry. Last but not least, persistence is important. This took almost three hours, uh, 160 mLs of contrast, so it was a challenging procedure, but persisting and troubleshooting each step led to a final successful outcome. Thank you.